guys, welcome back. I uh, thought I'd give you guys a quick update on the progress of the table uh, that, and where we're at at the moment. So I've been pretty busy lately, which is why this video has taken a little bit longer to, to get out. Just due to end of financial year with work, it's, work's been pretty hectic. Uh, I've also still running an extension lead down into the shed because I don't have power down there. So I've just spent the last uh, week or so digging out the trench uh, to run power down to the shed, so I've been preoccupied with running, uh, digging trenches, running conduit for the cable, the electrical cable, and also fitting down pipes into the stormwater, and etc., etc. Which you'll you'll see here the the trench runs from the corner of the house down to the shed, uh, and I had to dig it by hand, uh, which was fun to say the least. But I have been down in the shed uh, of a night time, so once the the little kitties are off in the bed. Uh, it's time for me to head down in the shed, and, and uh, I've, made, I've pretty much made all the brackets, uh, which I'll run through you now. So the first bracket is I've made three of the motor mount brackets. So the motor will slot in like so. Um, now these bolts are actually. Uh, I've actually tapped, drilled and tapped the bracket, so the bolts themselves will slot in like this, so if you can imagine the bolts going through. The only reason I haven't got the motor attached to the bracket is the head on these bolts um, are a little big, and they actually bind uh, in here, or when they go in here, it pushes the bolt off center, so therefore it's really, because it's really tight to get these in, so uh, I need to either look for additional bolts or I may have to just drill one of these particular holes out so I can I've got a little bit of wiggle room because uh, I'm actually pretty happy with how um, how good these little brackets came out again they'll probably be depending on how they go I'll probably recut them uh, but you can probably see I've had to take the grinder to them a little bit you can see from the plasma cutter there's a little bit of gouging and uh, there's some a lot of sort of freehand work down through here that I did when I was using the torch and it's on I'm not sure if you can see it on the video but there is a slight bevel on it um, just getting used to using the torch I think I've just angled the torch slightly which has caused the bevel um, or it could have been the fact that the tip was getting the was starting to um, need, or basically need a replacing so as they deteriorate apparently the plasma will move around a little bit but I have a feeling it was me angling the torch uh, but this basic motor mount, um, I'll show you where this goes on the plan. So this is, uh, once I get the plans, this is the motor mount for the Z axis. So you'll see from the plans here, uh, probably this one's the best one to have a look at. Uh, the motor sits on it, you have a pivot nut here and then you have a, an adjustment here and it's basically held on with a spring um, to give you your, your spring tension. Uh, the bracket you see here for the Z axis which is this one here, uh, if you remember correctly I used a big piece of angle and this piece I've pretty much machined all the holes um, and I've machined, I've threaded and tapped this side, oh sorry, I've drilled and tapped this side as well. The only thing I haven't done is because I used an angle and these holes are actually higher than, so you've got this piece that extends up here if you can see it, uh, I haven't actually welded that on or, or completed that bracket. So it's still down in the shed and I'll, um, I'll continue uh, having fun making that particular bracket itself. Uh, I had so I didn't take too much machining video only because well I'm not the world's greatest machinist I'm a hobbyist uh, and if you if you want to see the professionals do it check out Keith Fenner's videos or uh, A Bomb Seventy Nine Adam Booth or Tom over at Ox Tools those guys are the professionals and uh, they that's I've learnt a lot of stuff from those guys and try and use what I've learnt from those videos into what I do here with this. Now I made this particular bracket on a little, uh, I think it's called a C mini, uh, X2 mini mill. Uh, this here is just cut with a 40 mil hole saw in the mill. 
Uh, I'm still digging because uh, of the because of the way the cutter, I had to run it really, really slow. And you'll see some footage here of me uh, of me cutting these particular holes for the brackets. It was time consuming because my mill just doesn't have the torque to run the cutter. I couldn't, if I run the cutter too fast, I get a lot of chatter and noise. Uh, running it a lot slower, sometimes it would bind up and just stall the uh, the chuck itself. So uh, you'll see that in the, in the video here of, of, of that stalling a couple of times. And uh, the other thing I noticed is with the cutting and moving so slow and using a, a slow feed rate, it was just sending off these tiny little shards of steel and I've pretty much been picking them out of my fingers and hands and that while making the, the additional brackets because silly me didn't vacuum up the uh, or clean down after I, uh, I did all the cuts so but all three of these brackets now are made uh, which is good uh, I've also made I had to make ten of these now these particular are just literally uh, the 50 mil box, uh, box tube will attach on here and it just gives me some movement uh, by with the slots on the table so when I'm assembling it I can fine-tune the table the other brackets that I've done are this particular bracket here uh, and I'll just say the brackets I have done so far are the ones that I can use for getting the table set up because that's the next thing I really want to do I haven't looked at doing the Z axis brackets yet with the torch holder and, and so forth only because I want to get the linear motion down and see how we go. Uh, this is the gantry. Um, so this is my uh, X axis. So where it attaches on to the, uh, uh, to the Y axis, this is the X, uh, the two battery, or these are the two brackets basically that hold the X axis up. Uh, I use some, just some angle, uh, which you'll see here. So this is just a piece of 55 by 55 angle of slotted the top. So this is where the, so this bracket will sit on the X axis, oh, sorry, the Y axis, and the X axis will run this way. Again, with it slotted, I've got that little bit of wiggle room to get my axis nice and straight. On this side, uh, we have slots here for the, uh, for the actual bearings themselves. So if you have a look at the completed drawing, which is in amongst my paperwork here. So this is the drawing here. So this part here is the bracket that I've made. This particular bracket will have a motor mount that will sit like this. And it'll have a pin, so if I can hold it there, that for adjustment this way. So using this particular slot. So that's how the brackets will sit. Uh, the these are just drilled and tapped. That's for the tensioning spring. So the tensioning spring will run from here to here, and once the motor's on, and we get that all adjusted out, uh, and then the bearings will sit on the inside here on these slots. Now. What I've done is, because these are just going to be, they don't they use a concentric bush for the bearing, um, these are an 8mm slot, or an, uh, probably 9 actually, because I, I ran a mil, I drilled an 8mm hole top and bottom, and then I used my, uh, just my end mill to create the slot, and I, I, I ran, I pushed over, just for accuracy, I pushed over a mill either side so that I don't believe a 10 mil bolt will fit through there if it doesn't I'm gonna to have to put it back into the on the mill and just open these up a touch so I can push a 10 mil bolt through so the bearing will sit on and then I've got a slight bit of adjustment up and down for the particular bearing um, on on the axis so uh, all in all I'm happy with how most of the bearings came out uh, I mean sorry bearings most of the brackets came out um, I've got a box of goodies here which are just the rest of my brackets uh, the other three motor mounts now with these particular well with all the the brackets I made I printed out I mentioned it in one of the other videos I printed them out on 250 GSM card and I just literally stuck them onto the the steel and I just center punched 
where the holes were going. And for the slots, I sent up punched up the top of the slot and the bottom of the slot, and then just ran it up on the mill with the uh, with the end mill. So uh, really happy with how they, they they've come out. Uh, there's probably a few little alterations I need to do. Uh, I could have possibly made them out of aluminium as well, um, but at this stage, it's cheaper for me to destroy steel than it is to go out and purchase aluminium and destroy that, even though the aluminium would have been a lot easier to work with uh, and probably would have been able to do it a lot quicker, but we'll see how the steel goes. Uh, next, I'm on to the table assembly itself. So I'll be fabricating up uh, the, the sides and the legs. At this stage, I probably won't put casters on it. Uh, just at this stage, I don't know. I might, I'm still toying with the idea of to put the casters on, but we're basically gonna make the table itself, make the arm up here, uh, and we're gonna make these rails. Now these rails, are my 30 by 30 mil by 30 mil angle. Uh, in the diagram, it calls for a 90 degree uh, angle to be milled on the tip, and that's what the 90 degree V bearing. I'm sure, uh, that's what the 90 degree V bearings will actually run on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, at the moment, because it's cold rolled steel, it's got a nice roll on it, and I showed you in one of the bearings about how it rolled and my ideas on that. I've also got a cutter that will cut, uh, so if I cut both sides of it, it will create that 120 angle. I thought I might give that a go, so we'll see how it rolls just on the cold roll first. If that fails, I'll try and uh, we'll mill in a, uh, a 120 degree angle. The only downside to that is I've got a really short table on my mill, so I'm gonna to have to keep repositioning the uh, the angle as we cut it. Uh, so it may take a little bit of time. Failing all those options, I've also got that hex bar that uh, we can just weld on top of the um, weld on top of the, the actual angle itself. So, uh, and then it also calls for the rack to be put onto the back side of the angle. So this piece here, here is the actual rack. So the rack will sit there, uh, or actually, so this will actually sit this way on top of the on top of the table here. So um, yeah, so that's where we're at at the moment. Uh, hopefully, it's probably not. I haven't progressed as far as I would have liked, uh, just due to time constraints uh, with with the kids and. Uh, trying to get power down in the shed and work, it's it's been tough, but hang in there, hopefully we'll start, I need to clear some, the other thing I need to do is clear some space on my shed floor, so I can start to build uh, the particular table, uh, or particular, start building up the frame and that, because I just don't have a, uh, enough room in there at the moment, um, I've got a couple of other projects that I've been working on that I need to sort of probably just push out to the side and go from there, so uh, again, Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to get the new video out. I really want to start on the table ASAP. I'm, I'm itchy to get this thing built and to, and to play around with it. And what I'll do is I might take some more uh, video in the shed of the assembly side of things and the creation of this thing, just so you can see how an old hack like me uh, has, has been able to, to make up some brackets and so forth. Um, but as I said, if you want some good machining tips and that, go and check out those uh, those channels I mentioned earlier because those guys are um, they're the pros. So uh, until next time, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please rate, comment, subscribe. If there's something that you would like me to uh, add into the videos or any questions or whatever, please ask them in the comments below. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching. Cheers.